Hey everyone, Mr. Toad here. Welcome back to another flipped lesson. And in this lesson, we're going to be just introducing uh, moving, lifting, and transporting patients. A really important topic because no matter where we see a patient, whether on the snow, in their house, on the side of a road, uh, we're going to have to lift them and move them so that we can treat them and transport them. Uh, so these are your key terms and objectives, so make sure you know these. Uh, if you want, take a screenshot and go back and look at it later. All right, so a quick one today because there's a really this is a really big topic, uh, really in depth, and we could spend days, weeks talking, practicing about the many different ways, techniques, uh, tools, different tools and, and devices that we use to lift patients up, move them around, carry them, and transport them. Okay, and we need to remember the goal of us in EMS, right? Whether we're outside or working in a nine one one service is we need to get the patient to a higher level of care and we need to do it safely, efficiently, and quickly, right? Um, in New York City here, in this FDNY ambulance, we gotta get the patient from up here on this seventh floor apartment uh, down into the ambulance stretcher here and onto the ground so we can transport. No different than here in this rock climbing uh, area, wherever it is somebody got hurt, they need to get this patient down off this rock face, okay? And you can see a very complicated scene here, lots going on, lots of practice and expertise needed here. And no matter the circumstance of how we're lifting or moving a patient, what tools or devices, we must observe the number one principle of whenever we're working with patients is that the patient, well, we can't drop them or allow them to fall, but the first principle of medicine is do no harm, right? Our patients are ill enough, they're very sick, they might be injured. Uh, we need to at least do no further harm, right? We may not treat them. We not, may not make them better in the field in an emergency situation, but we definitely can't make it worse. So we need to do everything we can to not drop a patient or allow them to fall during the treatment or transport process, okay? Uh, and that includes things like we never let a patient walk out to the ambulance, okay? Because in that one chance that they might stumble or they might feel weak or they might start having uh, severe chest pain, and they're gonna fall, they could injure themselves more, okay? And not only is that in a legal sense that we would be liable, uh, in a moral sense, right? We don't wanna hurt our patients. And it's just important to remember that if at any time during your assessment, whether right away in your scene size up in your first 30 seconds on scene, uh, or later on you suspect a spinal injury or a head injury, it's important to protect that patient's spine. And uh, there's different ways that we'll do that, which we'll talk about later. but. Really important stuff here. So out of everything we'll talk about, both on this lesson and in class, uh, really important to make sure we don't do any more harm. So be super careful and good communication is key. All right, so a couple key terms here, and you'll notice as we go through, uh, maybe some familiar faces on these slides. What could I say? Um, I got a career as a model, but how do we handle a patient? So a couple key terms. So a move is the transport of patient from one location to another. Uh, and generally this means, I wouldn't say moving from their home to the hospital, but maybe we need to move from the bathroom out into the living room so we have more room to work. Uh, maybe we need to move from inside a smashed up car out to the road surface. Maybe we need to move from under a log out to a snowbank so we have a little more room to work. Okay, so how do we move a patient? A lift is a way of moving the patient um, from a lower position to a higher one, okay? And there's many different ways to do this depending on what's wrong with the patient and what we're trying to accomplish. And a lot of times we will lift them up, okay? A drag is a method of pulling a patient on the ground to another location. And you can think about some times where you might need to drag somebody. Um, generally, it's probably not too comfortable to get dragged. So I'd say this is probably for times where it's a real emergent situation. We need to get out of there quickly. Okay, and a carry is the act of lifting and moving a patient, usually a short distance. So with a combination of moves, lifts, drags, and carries, right, we're gonna get our patients from the position we find them, whether it's just laying in bed or to a real pretzel or not uh, from some kind of accident where maybe they were ejected or they fell down a hill. Uh, we need to figure out how to get them the right way and then move them up to, or move them up or to another area where we could treat them better and then transport after we stabilize their injuries or treat their illness, okay? And you can see some of these. Uh, a drags, lifts, carries all down here. Okay, so when we're lifting uh, or sliding a patient, it's really important that we do this the correct way. And fun fact, the most uh, common injury to EMS workers in the industry is not getting hurt by patients, not getting hurt in responding to accidents and car accidents, 
but it's actually by lifting patients. Because what do we do all day? We lift people up and we put them down. Um, and if you're working in a professional service where you're a really, really busy call volume, you're lifting people up all day long and you might be lifting really heavy people or in really awkward positions. And anybody that's ever hit the gym or even just lifted something heavy knows uh, you can really hurt yourself if you do it the wrong way. Okay. So first of all, to actually lift something, right, we need to use what's called the power grip. This is a grip that maximizes the force of your hands and allows you to grab an object firmly. And you can see here this demonstration with this EMT is grabbing the ambulance stretcher, right? Her palms are faced out so that she's getting the entire surface of her palm around there as well as closing her fingers, right? If she were to just grab this way, she'd be grabbing just with her fingertips. So she's using her whole hand uh, and grabbing whatever we're lifting, whether it's a stretcher, a backboard, scoop stretcher, stair chair, firmly, all right? So using that power grip is key to maximizing how much we can lift, all right? And then really the important part here is when you lift, right? There's a proper way to lift. And weightlifters are known for a long time. If you ever watch professional weightlifters or World's Strongest Man, great stuff on ESPN in the morning. Um, they can lift like super heavy objects, cup hundreds of pounds without injuring themselves. Okay. And really what it, I mean, there's lists of how of proper lifting techniques, and we can really get into it, but the best way to lift uh, is when you align your spine and it evenly distributes the weight that you're trying to lift up. Okay, and think about it like this. If you ever heard, don't lift with your back, right? You can see this picture here. We see this EMT spine is straight up and down and their legs are bent at like a 45 degree angle, right? They're lifting with their legs and their hips using those big muscles to stand straight up, right? But their back is straight. We see a lot of injuries when you lean over. You can see right here, basically the same picture, right? Uh, you can see right here, her back is almost straight up and down, right? As close as she can get it. When you lean super far over, if you reach and try and lift up, that's when you can pull back muscles. You can really injure your spine, uh, your vertebrae, your muscles, and you could be out of work for a long time. You could be seriously injured for the rest of your life. So really important that we practice proper lifting techniques uh, because this is what we're doing all day long and we don't want to injure ourselves. All right. So uh, types of lifts. So I'm not going to get into details of how to do these. We're going to do these in class, but these are some of the big ones that you should know. Again, some familiar faces on the slides. All right. And we, we kind of break these lifts into uh, two categories. One's that, that we can do without spinal protection and lifts that we could do with spinal motion restriction or protection. Okay. And again, it comes back to our patient assessment, which we'll talk about, but does that patient have a potential head, neck, back injury, right? Where we need to be concerned about uh, protecting their spine. Okay. And if we rule out that they do, we're going to use certain lifts where we protect the spine. And if we rule out they don't, we we'll use different lifts that, um, are not necessarily protecting the spine. Doesn't mean they're bad for the patient, but we're not thinking about that in mind, okay? And just one thing here to note as we move along is that with all the lifts and carries and drags we're gonna talk about, you need to remember that there's no right answer for every situation because every situation we're gonna see is different, right? Um, depending on how the patient's lying, the conditions of the environment we're in, how big a space we have, how many rescuers we have. There's different lifts for different things. So there is no right or wrong answers. And that's why it's important that we know all of these types of lifts, carries, and moves so that we can use the proper run, one that'll be best for our patient and best for us. Okay. So a couple here that we, we should know, the extremity lift, right? Using our extremities, the arms and legs, you can see here, these two rescuers are grabbing the patient and moving them out. Okay. A direct ground lift. I don't have that one in here, but basically three rescuers lift them straight up. This one's really good to use a bean or bridge lift. And you can see us doing it here in the bottom right. We're lifting up Mrs. Toda, I mean a patient here, um, with four rescuers, somebody's hiding over here, where our heads are against each other's shoulders, making like a bridge. And we're lifting just slightly with our arms so that we could slide some type of device, whether a backboard or a scoop or something like that underneath. So this is a great lift for people with pelvic injuries, hips, uh, legs, anything where we're not too concerned about a spinal injury, but we need to lift them up just a little bit to get something under. Okay, that would be a bridge lift, like we call it. Um, then some moves that with spinal motion restriction would be uh, a sheet, right? A uh, plastic slider or flat transfer lift. I don't have any pictures of these, but these are really crucial, especially when we get to the hospital, right? We have our ambulance stretcher and we have the hospital bed. How do we get them over? Well, we, we can slide them using the sheet they're on, or we could slip a plastic slider, slide them over seamlessly while protecting that spine. 
And then probably one of the most common things we'll use is a log roll. All right. And if you ever um, have seen a log, right, it's it's round. And if you were to roll the log, it just keeps going like that. And uh, like if we were to roll down a hill. So a log roll is when we take a patient that's lying supine or facing straight up, right? And we have three rescuers here. And this is the second part of the second half of the log roll. They reach across. Somebody's stabilizing the head and neck here. So it's uh, all the spine moves in unison from supine to facing forward. Uh, and they all roll in the same time. Nice, smooth maneuver. And then we can put a backboard or a scoop stretcher underneath if we have to and roll them back. Okay. One crucial thing you'll see I have it here in bold to remember with a log roll is that when somebody has a suspected pelvic fracture, right, a fracture down here of the pelvis, um, we don't want a log roll because if those bones are broken and now we start shifting, the broken bones of your pelvis, right, where your hips are, can actually rub against each other and you could bleed a lot. And it's almost like little knife edges cutting up your soft tissue. So log rolling can actually really harm a patient and make them bleed profusely inside that we don't see. So we ought to remember, we don't log roll pelvic fractures. We would use something like a bridge lift where we gently lift them up just a little bit to get something underneath them. Okay, so those are some lifts. Now let's talk about moving somebody. Again, some familiar faces. Um, we have kind of two categories, right? Whereas with lifts, we had either spinal or non-spinal to think about. Here we have urgent versus non-urgent, okay? So an urgent move is something we want to do where we got to get out of there quick, okay? Because usually the scene is not safe. So maybe uh, a building is on fire or maybe it looks like a car is about to fall on top of us or down power lines at a car accident. All right, we need to get somebody out of there real quick. Uh, and generally with urgent moves, we're not necessarily thinking about C-spine protection, we're not necessarily thinking about uh, patient comfort if they have some broken bones or whatever. Um, we're just getting them out there as quickly as we, we, we can so that they don't die, right? So a shoulder drag, right? Grabbing somebody from the shoulders or from their clothes. Uh, and I don't have a picture of this one, but a real great way is just, especially in the winter, you have jackets or sweatshirts, grab them, support the head and start walking away. Okay, a feet drag, grab them by the feet and walk this way. This one is a great maneuver called a blanket drag. If you can get somebody onto a blanket or a sheet or a tarp, just roll it up and start running away with them here. Uh, and then the underarm wrist drag here, right? Coming up from underneath somebody's armpits, grabbing the opposite wrists, and you get a nice hold on them and can start walking them away. Okay, some non-urgent moves where we could take some time, two-person assist, kind of like a, a human crutch, right? Maybe you'll see football players doing this when they walk off the field, one on each side. Um, this is something that maybe our cheerleaders know about, a chair carry uh, or kind of like a basket where you make a basket with your hands with another rescuer and the patient can sit here. Uh, and then the classic human crutch, one, you know, just getting their arm over you and helping them along. Okay, and it's just important to remember with these moves, right, this is not all the moves you may ever do as an EMT, um, but with these moves, we want to generally try and protect our patient from, again, that first rule we talked about, not doing any more harm. So if somebody's got a broken leg, we really shouldn't be doing a two-person assist or a human crutch and letting them walk on it, okay? Think about these as when we need to move somebody out of a place uh, quickly, or maybe not too quickly with a non-urgent, but someplace where we get them to a stretcher or a stair chair or something like that, okay? So this is a big one here, transport equipment, because, and we'll think about that first picture, right? If we have somebody in a seventh floor apartment, well, we don't want to have to chair carry them all the way down. Um, we're going to use a tool. Okay. So here's some of the more common tools and just take note of these because we'll, we'll, we'll use some of these in class and we'll see some of these with the fire department when they give some demonstrations. Um, and a little bit out of order here with the pictures, but probably the most, obviously the most common thing we're going to use in EMS is the ambulance stretcher itself. Okay. And these are really cool now. Um, you can see there were some older pictures of old fashioned ones where you had to lift it up and work it to get it up and down because they move up, they move down, the rails come down, you can recline, you can lay it straight down, it could sit straight up, make it longer, shorter. But now with these power stretchers that they make, uh, they're awesome. You'll just pop it right into the ambulance, push a button, whoop, picks it right up. Uh, same thing, if you want to lower it or hire it for the patient, just uh, hit the button. All right. But again, with these stretchers, they still tip over just as easy. And we'll watch some great videos where uh, if you look up stretcher fails, and we'll watch them. So don't feel like you have to, but there are some funny videos of EMTs and paramedics who probably didn't, uh, you know, pay attention during class when we talked about how to move patients properly. So we always got to be prepared um, to not let patients fall, right? We don't want to do harm. Um, so moving along the list here, a backboard, uh, which is this over here, also called a long spine board. 
We used to use these a lot back in the day for back injuries, spinal injuries. Now pretty much uh, we don't use them anymore for that because research shows that it can actually cause more harm to a patient. We'll talk a lot about this, but I include it because they are usually uh, included in the ambulance as a backup to the scoop stretcher we'll talk about. But uh, something else to think about the backboard is you can see all these handles on it. It's a great way to get hands on a patient. And if we have a patient that's way off in the woods and we need to get them up to the ambulance or to our toboggan or whatever we're transporting in, um, it's great to get them on this backboard. It stabilizes them. And we can have eight different people grab handles on it and carry them out nice and easy. So it's still a tool we use if we don't use as much as we used to. Okay, the scoop stretcher here. This is our kind of a new and improved backboard, and these are really awesome. You can see here in the middle, there's this big gap, and it's only held together by this little silver point. So these actually come apart and open up like a clamshell, right? And what we actually do is take the two parts and we can scoop somebody up, um, and it's got a nice, it forms to their body. It's They have this nice open space, really comfortable for a patient, okay? Uh, a basket stretcher over here, also known as a Stokes basket sometimes. These are really used for... A lot of high angle rescues, uh, all terrain rescues, off road type of stuff where we have injured hikers or bikers or skiers or things like that. And we need to get out of somebody out of some rough terrain. Okay. Probably the second most common thing we use in EMS is the stair chair. Okay. And it's down here and it looks kind of like a wheelchair, <clears throat> except it's designed to be able to be used easily on stairs. And you can see there's handles in the back here, there's handles in the front here. Uh, and we'll play with this here in class, but. Basically, one patient on each side, or excuse me, one EMT on each side, the patient's strapped in. We can carry them up and down stairs. And the newer ones, like this here, it's not extended, but they have a bar in the back where you just lay the bar on the stairs and it rides right down. Very easy. All right. And the only thing with this is our patient needs to be conscious to use a stair chair. If somebody's unconscious, they'll flop right out of there. So we need to make sure our patient is conscious to use that. All right. We have these big sheets called Mega Movers, which are great for... Um, and you can see these heavy duty handles on them. Great for really big patients that may not fit on a stair chair or a scoop. And they're also great for areas where it's hard to maneuver. So really tight staircases. And the same goes with this thing called a sked or a sked sled, which is developed by the military. Uh, and we use it all the time. And you can see it's really versatile. So the, this is a dummy in here. Um, and you basically you wrap them up and it's great because you could use it for high angle rescue, just like the Stokes basket as they're doing here. They're lowering somebody off like a tower or something. Um, but you can even use it just to get somebody down a flight of stairs, right? Really easy and maneuverable. You strap them in and they're not going anywhere. And we'll play with this too in class here. All right. So those are some of our tools. We got a lot more transport equipment, um, but those are some of the more common ones, especially the stretcher, stair chair, and scoop. Uh, and we'll be familiar with those on how we use those to lift and move patients. And again, it's important to remember with these that our key principles of lifting and moving patients still apply. So we're always lifting from our legs, keeping our backs straight, Nice wide stance, good power grip to lift properly and not get hurt. And of course, remembering our number one rule, which is do no further harm. All right. And on that, that's the end of this quick lesson on uh, lifting, moving, and transporting patients. We'll talk a lot more about this in class uh, and be able to get to do some practice. So shoot me an email or tweet at me at Mr. Toto 13 if you have any questions. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.